We have all these complications. So which system comes on board first? Do you learn how to sound out words first? Do you learn how to memorize words first? Which one do you think children do first? Yeah, because which language still came on board first? It was that phonology. That's your perceiving sounds, being able to say sounds. So our first reading skill should be, can you sound out words? Can you sound out using that phonological system? As the system gets strong, then you get better being able to actually memorize words. That's where you now begin to actually drive that sight word knowledge and begin to memorize those words as well. As that goes along, then we know now you need vocabulary. Why? Why do you need vocabulary to read? Yeah. What's the purpose of reading? Yeah, to understand and learn something, but if you don't know the meaning of words, you're not going to understand the meaning. You're not going to get some content from words themselves. We now know that when these three skills are working really well, we've built a solid foundation for reading that we want every child to have. And when that happens, our next product is reading fluency. Now they're going to be better able to sound out the words. Okay. How do we know this? We studied it. This was another five-year study we did. The question was, do we actually have to do fluency training? Do we actually have to do repeated readings, choral readings, chunking, phrasing? There's all these you know, um, common practices of how a child become more fluent reading. But the other theory was, yeah, but kids who don't have reading problems, guess how they get their fluency? What do they do? They just read. So maybe it is, the more efficient this system is here, the better you can quickly just sound out words, that's going to drive that fluency skill set. We did a study, tested it out, and that's exactly what we found. You could do lots of fluency instruction, but if you actually made this system become much more efficient, much more automatic, you automatically got fluency, and you didn't need fluency instruction. It was a natural byproduct. Here's another way to think about that. The average fifth grader who has reading problems, guess how many words they'll read in one school year? Missing the blue shirt. How many words does a fifth grader read in one school year? Counting the same words more than once, too. Give it your best guess. He doesn't know either. It's OK. In one whole school year, yeah, as a fifth grader. I don't think thousand. Okay, thousand, what do you think? Two thousand, what do you think? Three thousand? <laughs> Try six hundred thousand to a million. Because we're counting the same words more than once. They, they might see the a thousand times. Or they might see a uh, five hundred times. They're going to read about six hundred thousand to a word, six hundred thousand to a million words in one school year. Okay? How many words do you think the child who has a reading difficulty? and struggles with reading, how many words do you think they're going to read in a whole fifth grade year? Wayne, what do you think? 10,000. 10,000. Miss, what do you think back there? Uh, uh, 20. 20? Um, I still say 100,000. 100,000? Half of what I Half think. of that. That would be great. Try 50,000. Mm -hmm. That's our current estimates. 50,000 versus 600,000 to a million. Which brain is getting more practice? Mm -hmm. The brain is doing the 600,000 to a million. We have 10 times difference in the practice. That is a phenomenal effect on learning. This is why I started this discussion by talking about intensity, frequency, and specificity of instruction. We just hit a really key element, which is how much practice you're getting. If you're only reading 10 times fewer words, that in and of itself is going to cause a gap to grow in the developmental skills. But this isn't enough. This is not our core reason for reading. What's the real reason for reading? What did you say it was? You read, we learn what? Yeah, content, information. So it's really all about comprehension. Our goal for teaching reading is so that kids can comprehend science, social studies, English, math, literature. That's our primary goal. But we won't get here if these skills down here aren't strongly developed. 